Here's how to run Stable Diffusion using Comfy UI with an incredibly powerful inference engine made by NVIDIA called TensorRT. This is what we'll be comparing against. When I queue the prompt again, we can see how long it takes. As you can see, the bar, you know, what is that? About seven, eight seconds or so. How the speeds. So yeah, much faster, much, much faster. Hi, I'm Carter. I'm a founding engineer at Brev.dev, and today I'll be walking through exactly how to do that. If you follow along with me in the link below, there's a link to what we call a launchable. A launchable is really any way to package up both hardware. In this case, we're using an NVIDIA RTX A6000. This actually also works on 4090s, a particular container, and then some software package it all up into a link so that you can click it below and actually run the exact thing that I have right here. As I mentioned, we'll be using Comfy UI and TensorRT today to generate some fun images. This was actually posted by NVIDIA AI on their LinkedIn uh, uh, profile with called NVIDIA AI, where they posted a comfy UI workflow generating essentially superhero poses uh, from an image. We won't be doing all of that today, but I'll be walking through how to set up comfy UI and using TensorRT. So all you have to do once you create an account on Rev is just click deploy launchable. And what we're actually doing behind the scenes now is going and spinning up that NVIDIA RTX A6000 GPU. And then we are putting the container, this notebook on it. I'm not gonna be walking through the notebook too much today like I do in the other guides, because really this notebook is just setting up the environment to start running Comfy UI. Uh, essentially what we'll be doing today is using Stable Diffusion to generate some images based on a prompt that we want. But we'll be using TensorRT. What TensorRT is, is it's a, essentially a way that NVIDIA created to package up a model into an engine so that inference can be really, really fast. Inference is when you make essentially a query to a model and you get an output. In the case of ImageGen, you're saying, hey, this is prompt, turn it into an image. Traditionally, that, especially for ImageGen, can be fairly slow. And so what TensorRT does is it goes through a bunch of simulations trying to solve the underlying math and actually optimize it for the underlying hardware. So it detects that we're on an NVIDIA RTX GPU and then it'll create an engine so that inference is much, much faster. And we'll actually see that in the demo. Uh, if any point when we wanna see where the Launchable is deploying, I can click go to instance page. And as you can see, we already have the instance up and running and the container itself is already built. Any second now, we should be able to open up the notebook and we'll be able to start running the cells to set up Comfy UI so that we can actually begin the image gen. Uh, this is a pretty fun demo. And as you can see, this particular instance is only about 56 cents an hour. So if you wanted to you know, do this all, you could probably do it within, you know, for a dollar or so. As you can see, we now have the open notebook. I'm just gonna click that. And what that actually does is it will open the notebook that's actually now running on the NVIDIA RTX 6000 behind the scenes. Here is the notebook here. And uh, like I said, I'm not gonna explain too in depthly. I'm hoping this uh, video here is, is fairly short, but all you have to really do is just click that two, that these two arrows right here, which will essentially run all the cells. You do have to restart the CUDA kernel. Um, I'll briefly just talk about what this is doing. It's just basically setting up the environment for Comfy UI. We have to install Comfy UI. We have to download the stable diffusion model and set up the uh, essentially TensorRT to be ready to start accepting stuff. Um, and so then we'll be able to, this is what Comfy UI looks like. By the way, Comfy UI is essentially a GUI or a graphical user interface to create complicated workflows like on that LinkedIn post, I'll put this post down in the description below as well. And you can see the demo where uh, an NVIDIA employee essentially created this workflow to turn himself into a superhero. So if you've ever seen the applications where it's like, oh, create your AI headshot and it'll turn you, just a random photo of you into like a professional LinkedIn photo, this is ultimately what's happening behind the scenes. And we'll be able to do it today for again, like a total of a dollar. And so you can imagine the implications of creating an application like this. And uh, I highly suggest you check it out. Like I said, the, all of this will be in the, the description below and you can follow along. Let's see what cell we're on. So if you're unfamiliar with Jupyter Notebooks, you can see we're still installing some stuff uh, and just essentially it'll take a couple minutes for us to set it up. So I'm just gonna come back to you once this is all set up, but what, we'll know that it's all set up once we get down to this cell here 
and once it is already running. So I'll get back to you once that's done. By the way, if you're curious what running Comfy UI on TensorRT on Rev actually means, our incredibly talented engineer Anish Madipodi wrote a blog that goes a bit more in depth into what Comfy UI and TensorRT are. I will also put this link down below. And uh, yeah, it should give you a bit more context on what we're actually doing today. If you're new to the Brev channel, please like, comment, subscribe. We find a lot of our users through this medium and we want to make sure that you have the best experience as possible. We have a Discord as well, where people are very interactive with us, the, the Brev team, and people like to help each other out. So I'll put that link in the description as well. So join the Discord, and if you have any questions or feature requests, please leave them there. Alrighty, now that all those cells have run and we've gotten to this cell, which is essentially just opening up the port and the Comfy UI server, we can now get ready to actually open up the, the Comfy UI UI. So once this cell is at this stage, it, it's took me about five to 10 minutes. What I can do now is go back to my instance here on Brev and click access. And because on this particular launchable, we've already encoded it such that this port is open. All you have to do is click this link. By the way, if this says unhealthy, there's a known bug right now, we're trying to fix it, but it probably still will work if you just click that link. And now this is what Comfy UI looks like. If you uh, have never seen this before, it might be a little bit a daunting, but I promise you it's not. It's essentially each of these nodes is just a different stage of what's called a workflow for ImageGen. And we'll be using the Stable Diffusion XL Turbo model as part of this. Right now, we are not using the Tensor RT engine that is will, will be built for this particular model. So we expect this to be kind of slow. And so, for example, this particular prompt is just beautiful scenery, nature glass, bottle, landscape, purple galaxy, bottle. I'm just gonna change that. And instead, today we'll be having a little bit of fun. I'm just gonna say a handsome Lebanese man making a coding tutorial. All you have to do then is click Q, Q prompt. And now what it's doing is it's actually going through the workflow and this green little outline means that it's on that step. Loading the checkpoints will take a little bit, but that only has to happen once. This is actually loading in the model checkpoints to then actually run inference. And so, as I said, inference is essentially when you actually ask a model a question. In LLMs, that would be you prompting it like in chat GPT, and then it gives you a response. In ImageGen, that might be for this particular case, Clip is just encoding essentially text into the same space that images live as far as the computer understands, right? It's actually a long vector uh, dimension space. And how Stable Diffusion actually works is it takes it basically denoises an image. If you imagine if you put every pixel in an image, just a random pixel with random colors, and then it'll actually start to denoise it towards what it thinks you want based on the prompt. And so there we go. And as you can see, here we go. We have our handsome Lebanese man making a coding tutorial. Uh, we'll actually be optimizing for a batch size of four. So this is essentially the baseline. This is what we'll be comparing against. When I cue the prompt again, we can see how long it takes. As you can see the bar, you know, what is that? About seven, eight seconds or so. And then we actually get the, the four images of the handsome Lebanese man making a coding tutorial. If we can also get rid of the text watermark here, try it again. And it, yeah, probably about five seconds or so, right? And there we go. Here we have our handsome Lebanese man making a coding tutorial. We could do another one like uh, Mickey Mouse in front of the Eiffel Tower. How about that? And so, like I said, you can create complicated workflows here where you actually mimic certain styles or certain poses like in that NVIDIA LinkedIn post. Here we go. Now we've got Mickey Mouse in front of the uh, Eiffel Tower here. If at any point you want to save these image, you can click open image and save the image or just save the image directly. Pretty good stuff. But yeah, that so that's the baseline. Um, it takes about, you know, six, seven seconds to create those images. You can imagine if you have an application where many people are trying to create images like one of those headshot apps, then the speed at which you can generate images is really important. And Tensor RT, what we'll have to do now is if we go back to this notebook and we download the build here, all you have to click is do download right here and pick a file and then do the same thing for the create. I've already done that. So what I'm gonna do back here is go in here and go back here and click load file here. And then this workflow is really just building the engine. So I'm gonna click Q prompt again. 
Now, building the engine can actually take some time, uh, but you only have to do it once. And again, we're, we're hyper-optimizing essentially this model. We're turning it into an inference engine so that it can be really, really fast for the type of stuff we wanna do. In this case, it is batch size of four with images of 512 by 512 for this particular model, model which again is Stable Diffusion XL Turbo. And what NVIDIA has done here is essentially created a really, really cool piece of software that will do a ton of forward passes and hyper-optimize inference down to the hardware level, down to the oftentimes what's called the kernel level, uh, because ultimately what GPUs do is they do a lot of parallel programming, right? Parallel compute. And there's a lot of math that needs to happen when you're actually executing, for example, inference on a generative model, in this case, stable diffusion. And because NVIDIA has so much of the software stack, they've done it to where they can actually find the optimal math, the optimal methods to use based on your hardware. And so you will get the quickest inference speeds pretty much possible um, when you actually create a Tensor RT uh, engine based on a model based on your hardware. So if you were to actually move this particular engine to a different piece of hardware, it might not be as fast because again, it's been hyper optimized to that specific piece of hardware, which it detects automatically, by the way, this is, uh, used on the RTX series of GPUs, which actually many people have consumer RTXs. So if you have like a 4090 or something, GPU in your PC, you would be able to do that. You'd be able to create a model to actually run Stable Diffusion locally. In this case, I don't have that, so I'll be using Brev to get an RTX 6000. You do need a certain number of VRAM, um, but yeah, so if at any point you want to see how long it's taking to build the engine, this particular cell, we can see that it's starting to actually build the engine. Again, this only needs to happen once, and then we'll load in the engine and do essentially the same demo we did before, but this time we expect the, our inference speeds to be much, much faster. So I'm going to wait while this builds. I expect this to take another six or seven minutes to actually build the engine. Alrighty. So as we can see, it took about 323 seconds or five minutes or so to build the engine. So if I go back to Comfy UI, you can see that we have no more stuff in the queue, nothing's highlighted, which means we've actually built the engine now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click load again. I'm going back to downloads and I am just going to pick the create one that we downloaded. And you see we have the same ex workflow essentially, but this time we have uh, the Tensor RT loader here. And so I'm going to put the same prompt, a beautiful Lebanese man making a coding tutorial. I'm going to click Q prompt. So the first prompt will take some time because again, we need to load the model and then load the checkpoint. But after that, it should be very quick when we actually do that. So if you recall, when we were doing the prompts before uh, on the base, uh, on the base stable diffusion model, it was taking about five, six seconds to create four images or a batch size of four. Let's see how quickly we can get it now. Alrighty, it's now executing the prompt and that was pretty fast. And here we go. Now we have the, the Lebanese man making the, the coding tutorial. Let's try another one. What did we do last time? Mickey Mouse in front of the Eiffel Tower. Mickey Mouse in front of the Eiffel Tower. And so let's see how the speeds. So yeah, much faster much much faster and here we go we've got our mickey mouses Ooh, there's two eiffel towers in that one so these are pretty good um let's do one more uh, at brev we have a sf is dead shirt let's do a cartoon skeleton riding a wave you can have a lot of fun just messing around with this there we go look at that pretty cool stuff so that's really the demo here. Uh, really what we did today is we leveraged the power of Tensor RT for stable diffusion and comfy UI on the platform that I work to develop, Brev.dev. Uh, if we go back to our instance here on Brev, we can see that we started this instance at 4.13. It is now 4.41 p.m. So this was only about 30 minutes or 56 cents of compute used. Once you're done using your GPU, I highly suggest you delete your instance. It will auto terminate after you're out of credits. Uh, if you have any more guides that you would like us to do, then please leave a comment below. Subscribe. I have a lot of fun making these. And uh, if you're interested in more about TensorRT, check out either the blog post or the NVIDIA AI LinkedIn post. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.